Hello and welcome back to our Glass Cannon series, and you won't believe what happened in this episode. Oh yes, you won't believe it. Actually, uh, it's, it's exactly the same as, well, many other episodes where we fight some people, and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 pretty much, that's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, we're going to be attempting to attack the Azurai in this episode. Can you believe it? I know. I know, 9 out of 10 dentists cannot believe that this is what happened, really. And, um, you know, you clicked on the video, and I don't know whether that was because of the title, or whether it was because of something else, but obviously you won't believe what is happening here. This is the game Mount and Blade Bannerlord. I know. It's pretty crazy, right? Yeah. Pretty crazy. I know it's unbelievable. And uh, we're going to be going in here. This is actually a really, really even battle on a more serious note. And we might actually have some issues um, achieving victory here. Or at the very least, we're probably going to be having some problems with our, mm, with our casualty lists. Uh, we might have a couple more than we, we would like. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You never know what, what can happen. But anyway, let's just do a little bit of super fast mode. I don't want to do too much of it, though, because I literally almost got murdered. And you can see here that my arrows are hmm, not as intensive as they were previously. Because in general, I have a lot more random units thanks to... Whoa! Never mind. We actually have a lot of really, really good units. Look at these guys. They're kind of just, uh, they're just, they're just relaxing right there. That is actually really nice. A lot of cavalry, and hopefully we're going to be able to utilize them adequately enough. Okay, let's put my archers over here. Because, here's the thing. Um, we were talking about, in the previous episode, how, you know, archer positioning can have a big impact on whether we achieve victory or not. I mean, obviously, that is... You know, basically the point of the whole series to see if we can achieve victory with a very lightly armored um, archer force. So if the enemy gets within range of us, my my people will pretty much just fall over. That's pretty much what will happen. But that's the thing. Whether they're down in a valley or whether they're up, up high um, on a hilltop or something like that, I don't know whether it really matters. In the grand scheme of things, because if you th if you think about this, okay, so think about how every single one of these archers, and this is obviously, I'm talking about in favor of the whole uh, keeping archers on the low ground sort of thing, but just look at this, look at what's happening right now. Okay, so you see that they're obviously getting some kills here, and they're firing off into the majority of units, but do you see our arrow count? You see the arrow count, and you see how the arrow count is dwindling extremely fast? Yeah, that's also the main reason why I feel like the high ground, unless you have, I don't know, unless you have really, really clear line of sight and you're within effective range, I think the high ground is probably a disadvantage. Because in a long extended battle like this one, because let's face it, look at how many kills we've gotten so far. We've only gotten 19 kills. That's really bad. That is really, really bad, considering we have spent almost... Um, Almost what? Three, uh, two thousand? Yeah, almost. Um, actually, wait a minute. No, over two thousand arrows, and we haven't really gotten much to show for it, unfortunately. I am going to be sending my other forces to charge in, though. Apart from my archers, here we go. Now my archers are within effective range, quite obviously, and they're going to be a lot easier to um, hopefully get going. I'm actually going to tell them to skirmish here, because this is obviously going to be very, very difficult for us to stay alive if they don't skirmish. And uh, the Azurai do have some pretty good thrown weapons, so you do have to bear that in mind too. Okay, wait a minute. Maybe I can actually get into a... Oh, oh can I get into melee range? I might be able to get into melee range, maybe do some damage. Although we know that the AI is very good at blocking. Yeah, that might be impossible. Oh, nice! We actually got a kill. Can you believe it? Oh, nice, another one. Alright, so, so far, not too bad, but obviously once we entered effective range, that is a given, you know, my guys are pretty good at dealing damage, but they do take massive amounts in return, and uh, generally, yes, as you see there, we've just gotten 205 kills in short order. Now, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about, basically, 
Uh, just to touch upon that particular point again, the main reason why in extended battles, and that's the reason why I was talking about that in the previous episode as well, because we were outnumbered in that particular engagement, and archers being down below, it saves their ammunition without you having to micromanage them in such an intensive way, because obviously if they're down here, for example, this is actually a pretty perfect area to be in, then they're only going to shoot at enemies they see. And in those kinds of cases, that's going to save your arrows. That's going to save your arrows. That's going to increase the efficiency of your archers tenfold. And it's just going to generally make it a lot easier for you to achieve victory in many cases as well. Because if the enemy gets murdered before they actually have an opportunity to get close to you, then of course you're going to, you know, you're going to win. But you also have to bear in mind the attrition cost. Because the attrition in our in our case at the very least is arrow count. Because if we lose all of our arrows, we are basically dead in the water. And there's not much we can do about it. So that's also something to uh, to think about. That's also the reason why the um, amazing mod that you recommended to me, and I very much appreciate that, so thank you once again. The arrow counter mod is just so incredibly useful, especially for an army like mine. As, uh, you know, having arrows basically determines whether we live or whether we die. So it's pretty important. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can maybe get some kills myself. Where are my archers, by the way? They're over there. Okay, I'm actually going to tell them to stop auto-delegating now. And we're just going to move them onto this hill here. And we're going to fire off the rest of the arrows into the opponent. And if we if we can achieve victory before that time, then that's actually that's going to be great. You know, that's going to be fantastic. But if we don't, then, well, that's not going to be so good. But I just want to kind of test out and see whether we can actually finish off the enemy with a, a uh, uh, shall we say, a small height advantage. Because obviously this is not the greatest height advantage and the enemy's cavalry is surely not slowed down a great deal. Hmm, the enemy also has a pretty significant contingent of infantry units as well. Oh, we actually hit someone from there. Can you believe it? Look at that. That was actually kind of amazing. Okay, I can't believe that I actually hit someone from there. Okay, very nice. And it seems like our archers are getting some nice kills right here, mainly because we do have a certain split in our forces. You have the archers over on the left flank and the archers on the right flank and we seem to actually be shooting at separate targets which is actually quite cool i like that that's um apparently being quite effective amazingly enough maybe i can get a couple of kills here though nice Okay, I'm going to tell my infantry and my cavalry to charge in once again. Got to be a little bit careful about the cavalry myself. Don't really want to get myself murdered too easily. Note, I said too easily, because let's face it, I'm probably... You know me. I'm probably going to get eliminated by some polearm user or something along those lines. Oh, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. Hello there. going to tell my archers to charge in now basically because I want them to get into effective range. The enemy only seems to have 72 cavalry remaining on the battlefield. Ah, no, 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 never mind, never mind. I was actually incorrect. They seem to have an infantry force down by the coast here, which is kind of interesting in itself because I actually would have expected them to spawn somewhere inland, but apparently their reinforcement zone is right down here. Unfortunate for them, I suppose, because now they are getting absolutely cornered. And maybe I'll be able to get a couple of uh, couple of skill points with bows, who knows. I am actually getting focused down a little bit here, so I need to be a little bit aware of that. And maybe move in between my shots. Although that does, in turn, make things a little bit uncomfortable for my accuracy. No, 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 no. Do not kill me, sir. Thank you very much. You, you. So one of you can... Yes, I was about to say, one of you can kill me, but not that guy, you know? <laughs> uh, 
Yes, that is that is just wonderful, isn't it? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Aeron I'm playing right now. Aeron has an absolutely insanely large pole arm right now. And this is going to be a lot of fun to utilize, hopefully. Anyway, we seem to have lost quite a few of my own units right here. But my bear assassins have accrued a maximum kills so far, a maximum kill count, shall we say, of 308. You can see the arrow count, unfortunately, is now starting to dwindle quite significantly. I'm going to tell my archers, oh, they're, they, they are actually auto-delegating, so that's good. I don't actually need to do anything with them then. This guy has no arrows either, unfortunately. And, oh, it seems like we've gotten some uh, some new people that have entered the fight. That's going to be kind of nice to see. Oh, this is an amazing weapon. What's this? What is this weapon? It's a glaive of some kind, right? Surely it's a glaive. I'm not too sure. I don't think I've ever used anything like this before. But uh, seems to be very effective. I mean, it, I mean, come on. You, you've got to assume that it's going to be very effective against cavalry, of course. What, why are they going in the water? Do you see that? That is some weird stuff right there. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> this guy literally has no idea what's, uh, what's actually going on, apparently, because he's literally trying to attack me with a sword. And uh, I have a pole arm, and obviously the pole arm is just so, so, so slow. It's uh, very, very difficult to make it work on foot. So that's why I'm getting on a horse. This is my horse. My horse is amazing. Do not give it a lick. It does not like it. Thank you. And, oh, wait a minute. Hello there. Ooh, it's been a while since I've gotten on a horse and used a pole arm, that's for sure. Oh, this is fun. Oh, yeah. Now, this is the kind of thing that you really got to experience at least once in Bannerlord. The ability to get on a horse and ride as fast as you possibly can and use a massive pole arm in the process. Using a massive pole arm is kind of integral to the experience because... Let's face it, having that extra reach and the extra speed from your mount is going to result in some absolutely crazy damage. And that's just super fun in itself. Being able to see those big damage numbers, I mean, you know, if you're a fan of RPGs in general and you want to make your character really, really strong, then seeing a big damage number is just, it's just, it's just you know, it's just satisfying. It's just a satisfying experience. I mean, obviously, we're not getting huge amounts of damage at the moment. 221 is decent and is certainly enough to get us the kill in most cases. But if you really want to see massive numbers, then you're going to have to do some couch lancing or, you know, of your very own and, and things like that. But, um, yeah, that's not obviously something I'm really caring about at the moment. Let me actually just speed things up real fast because I think... And now, uh, I might be wrong about this, but I think this is going to be a victory for us. Yes, indeed. It is It is actually a victory. Pretty crazy that we were able to do that. We did sustain quite a few casualties, but obviously not as many as the opponent. And we can now move on and hopefully be able to venture throughout Azurai territory without any opposition, at least for a little bit. Because uh, bear in mind, I am a, I am going to be letting most of the people that I have the option to take prisoner go. Because I don't see a point in actually taking them prisoner at this point. Being able to potentially persuade them to join us. Because I think that I'm going to institute a, um, a rule from now on. That if I do go and try to persuade a vassal. And bear in mind, I'm not going to be doing this all the time by any means. But someone suggested this. And I thought, hey, you know what? That actually sounds like a pretty cool idea, because then I have to be a lot more selective about who I try to persuade to join us, and then it's going to be a pretty big deal when they do. And the suggestion you made was, well, why not just pay them more? And that actually is such, a, such a, an obvious solution to the problem that I have no idea why I didn't think of it myself. So thank you so much. That is so, so good, really, because that means that if I do try to persuade someone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them, I think you suggested 500,000. And I'm not sure if I can actually, I mean, yeah, maybe 500. I don't know. I, it might be a bit too costly at, the, at that point because I literally just have 380,000 at the moment. So I'm thinking maybe 250,000? Maybe something like that? I mean, I'm not really looking to persuade anyone at the moment because I feel like we're actually doing quite well as it stands. So I don't really see the necessity to recruit or indeed persuade any additional people. 
but you know it gives us the option it gives us the option to do that and I'm thinking that that might actually be quite nice so let's let's just make it depend on whether we really want that person or not and maybe what we should do is maybe make it that we maybe spend like 80% of our current um I don't know, of our current, I don't know, that, that's also a little bit too costly in my opinion, I don't know. Anyway, we actually have this guy. Yeah, we actually have this guy. I um, sent a messenger to him in the previous episode, and I thought to myself, okay, well, why don't we just recruit him anyway? You know, maybe he's going to be kind of useful, maybe he's going to be uh, kind of a... A nice addition to our party, because he actually has some very, very decent skills. And so I'm thinking maybe what we'll do is we'll turn him into a party of some kind. And uh, maybe he can just kind of uh, run around a little bit and, uh, you know, we can see what he does, basically. And maybe he's going to be somewhat cool, I don't know. But uh, let's give him 20 bear assassins just to run around with for the moment. I don't know how many he can get. I can get 105. Yeah, so uh, if you didn't understand what I said in the previous episode or if I explained it incorrectly or, you know, somewhat poorly, then, um, you know, about the whole My Little Warband thing and about the factions and so on and so forth, uh, then generally um, I might make a small video on it. I mean, it's literally going to be about a minute, probably a minute long or something like that. But generally the whole gist of it is My Little Warband folder within your mod directory settings.xml, open that up with notepad, and then change the setting for your units to recruit from your player kingdom from false to true. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's how you do it. And then you obviously save the, uh, save the file, and then it should be working. And I have actually confirmed that it is working for me at the moment because I uh, saw a vassal running around, uh, most notably, uh, Latha. Latha was the uh, was the woman that I saw, and uh, she was running around with a bunch of bear, uh, bear skirmishers, and um, it was actually super cool. It was actually super cool to see that. And um, yeah, actually, the uh, yeah. By by the way, by the way, I I personally okay. So here's the thing. She has a a title, right? She has a title. The title is Latha the Leopardess. Someone said that this is her faction, not her faction, her clan name. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think that's the case. Because isn't that literally just her title? Because as I uh, as I said before, and as I've I, you know as I've done basically with my my own units, uh, my companions all have titles as well. So, for example, the surgeon. And, uh, you know, the, the, well, the smith to a lesser degree, because obviously I didn't name this guy, but we've also got the engineer and the red and so on and so forth. So, for example, by your logic, you're saying that this guy is from a clan called Outcasts or something? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, anyway. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. I'm actually going to... Yeah, we need to recruit... A, well, we do need to recruit more people, to be honest. But we also need to spend some perks. Okay, let's have a look here. Mm, okay, now we're in a... Oh, no, 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 trade skill. Trade skill still needs to be leveled up a little bit. I'm going to go for some cunning. Uh, I think I actually have vigor coming, don't I? Yes, yes. Okay, my athletic skill needs to be leveled up. I need to get to 200 to be able to get my last... Uh, attribute point in Vigor, so that's going to be really, really nice. And otherwise, I'm just going to spend a point in Cunning there. Okay, so we have over 500 combat strength by ourselves, amazingly enough. That's pretty good. And Rajin has reached the age of two. Okay, uh, Vigor, I guess. Endurance. And there we are, social and cunning. Okay, fantastic. Oh yeah, someone said that I should age my... Uh, I, actually, a bunch of people said I should age my children up. So let me actually see whether I can even do that. Uh, it doesn't seem like she's even entered into the encyclopedia. So I don't know whether I'm even going to be able to do it. As you can see, I, I don't think I can. Uh, because if I can't see her through the... 
uh, through the encyclopedia, it is highly unlikely I'm going to be able to do anything in that regard. Wait a minute, maybe I can see her through here? Yes, I can. Okay, there we go. Okay, so edit appearance, and uh, we can just make her... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, where's the age? Where is the age? There's the age. Age of three. She's three at the moment. Okay, so let's just age her up a little bit. Let's make her... Uh, let's make her 20. Why not? Why, why is she zero weight? <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a little bit weird. Let's, uh, let's just increase that a little bit. And uh, the build, uh, well, let's just make that in the middle as well. All right, so yeah, anyway, there you go. There's our, uh, our daughter. And um, yeah, she's looking pretty good, actually. She looks a lot like her mother, amazingly enough. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's real nice. Anyway, so yeah, now, now that she's been aged up, I actually have no idea whether that breaks the game mechanics. Because she's not in my party, you see. That is the, uh, <laughs> that is the uh, slight issue. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Actually, is she even in my party at the moment? Or is she at our home base? It might very well be the case that she is back in our um our own territory that might be what's happening there anyway i'm actually going to save real quick usually i don't save when i'm recording an episode but um i know very specifically that this castle is uh, a bit problematic let's just say that it is a bit problematic so let, let me see what i can do here gonna build a couple of trebuchets i don't really want to destroy the walls here but we have found that it's just so much better for maintaining army strength that I'm thinking we might as well. But uh, I'm a little bit worried now because I just noticed that the very large army nearby to us was destroyed by an Azurai force. And we might very well be saying hi to them relatively soon. There they are. Yes, Tariq's army. Tariq, ah no, please don't attack me, sir. I would not appreciate that. Okay, so, well, we're just going to have to be kind of, um, I guess, kind of lucky, to be honest. We're just going to be kind of lucky here, and uh, we're going to get those built, going to get these built. There we are. Okay, fantastic. And this is also the reason why I would very much like to have the camera be unlocked during a siege, because the game actually locks it for you. And me personally, I don't really like that. I mean, obviously, that, you know, that's not something that I, I very much um, enjoy because I'd like to be able to move the camera around however I want. But obviously, I suppose that is the disadvantage to sieging something or besieging something. So maybe that's what's going on there. Anyway, do I have a level up? No, I do not. Okay, so let me see here. I do have a couple of units that can level up and we're just going to lead our forces in the assault. All right, so now this castle, as I said before, has a bit of a problem with a crash issue. At least I have had crashes in this particular map before. And so I would very much like to try and see whether that is still the same. And if it isn't, then great. But if it is, then at least I've saved and uh, then I don't need to really worry about it. And we can now enter the walls. Oh, wow. Yeah, my forces are absolutely murdering everything. I mean, I suppose to be expected. I mean, if the walls are down, you know, they really can't do much. I would like to be able to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of athletic skill, please, just a little bit. I actually am unsure what the best way of leveling up your athletic skill is because there's been a number of times where I've, you know, obviously leveled characters that specialize in moving really fast and using athletic skill and so on and so forth, and they've mostly been melee oriented. So I assume the best way to level athletics is literally just to use your uh, your melee weapon and just continue using it over and over again. However, the problem with that, with the realistic battle AI, is that the enemy is so good at blocking enemy attacks, then, well, not sure how I'm going to do that, to be honest. It's going to be uh, a little bit touch and go here and there. Anyway. We have achieved victory, we've taken it without any crashes, which is actually super nice, and I'm not going to be claiming this thief. Doesn't seem, um, you know, doesn't seem to be a reason for that. And we're probably going to be attacked soon. 
You know, I'm actually thinking that maybe it would be a good idea for us to make peace with the Azurai at this point. Because even though the Azurai have a huge amount of prisoners, I mean, generally we have a lot of prisoners of theirs and they have a lot of prisoners of ours. So it kind of wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't really be an even trade. But the thing is, they are willing to give us 3,300 tribute per day. That's actually kind of significant. And I'm thinking that if the war exhaustion, I mean, it's pretty high at the moment. So the war exhaustion, you know, you know, it could be, you know, you could make the argument that maybe getting 3,300 tribute per day could be worth it. Because then we might want to consider declaring war against someone else after a brief respite or something like that. And I'm thinking maybe it would be an idea. But as you can see, we're just about to be attacked here. And that's the reason why I'm kind of thinking, hey, maybe we should make peace and just get paid basically. Just get paid. And look at that, my tribute's already gone down. So I'm actually going to propose this right now. We're going to make peace, boom, have every single one of our vassals be released. Their vassals are also going to be released. So it's kind of a, as I say, a give and take in a way. And we are also now going to be making my way back to Kuyas because everyone's at peace here. Everyone's at peace here. We've kind of taken some significant casualties. You could see Aldrich's army was running around here too, but you could see that he is quite significantly less powerful than Tariq's army. And as a result, I would wholeheartedly assume he's probably going to get eliminated. And in which case I would really prefer he didn't, to be honest. I would really prefer that he just... Uh, leave it very well alone, you know, sort of thing, and, um, yeah, uh, try to save him from his own foolishness, potentially, you know, you never know when, uh, when the AI is going to run in against someone that's potentially much stronger than them, but anyway, I think our next target, which I very much hope we will be able to, uh, achieve, is going to be the Vlandians. The Southern Empire is literally giving me nothing, by the way, look at this. We've had peace with them for literally, I think, over 30 days or something like that. And they have only given us 18,000 tribute. That is actually kind of amusing. On the other hand, the Vlandians have given us 143,000. The Azurai, on the other hand, are going to be giving us much more. Yes, much more than that. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. Slightly shorter episode this time around, but obviously if there's peacetime, there isn't really too much for me to do at this point, with the exception of just recruiting some more units, doing a little bit of kingdom management here and there. But that's pretty much it. Otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.